When it comes to traveling and really experiencing a land and culture, it's hard to beat just walking. Walking through beautiful landscapes, eating delicious food, and meeting interesting people, it's just the best way to do it. It's relaxing, fulfilling, and fun. So let's take a walk and follow the prestigious Takedo, which was designed by Antoine Boza and published by FunForge, who helped sponsor this video. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murph, and we are here with BoardGameGeek.com. Well, I've got my best walking stick and I'm ready to go, so let's get this game down to the table and learn how to play Takedo and the Crossroads and Matsuri expansions. Takedo is a two to five player set collection game where players will be walking along the Takedo route where they will have encounters, collect souvenirs, and eat delicious food. Along the path, there are a number of different places for travelers to stop. But before we get into all that, let's go over the setup. We are first going to teach the base game of Takedo and then teach the expansions. Place the game board in the middle of the table. Place the achievement cards face up next to the board where everyone can see them. Shuffle the meal cards, souvenir cards, encounter cards, and hot spring cards separately and place them on the board. Sort the panorama cards by type and by value, and place them on their corresponding place on the board, sea, mountain, and paddy. Place the coins next to the board to create the bank, and each player will receive seven coins, unless you are playing with the travelers, in which case you will receive the coins listed in the top right of the traveler tile. The travelers give the players special abilities, and in a normal game, everyone would get two travelers and choose one to keep. For your first game though, you may wanna play without the travelers, and so we're gonna explain this game without them, but don't worry, at the end of the video, I'm gonna explain all of the travelers in the base game and in the expansions. That way, if you need to reference them, they're all in one place and easy to find. Lastly, players choose their colors, place a scoring marker on the score track, and the traveler pieces are randomly placed in a line at the first inn in Kyoto. And that concludes the setup. In Takedo, the player who is farthest back on the path is the player who goes next. On their turn, a player will move their traveler forward down the path and then take the benefit corresponding to the space they land on. They must move at least one space, but they may move more, skipping over spaces if they wish. After their turn is finished, it is now the turn of the player farthest back on the path, which may be the same player again. In this way, a player may get multiple turns in a row. Some of the locations on the board have multiple spaces. In a four to five player game, the second space is available for a traveler to go to. When determining who is farther back on the path, the player on the outside space is considered to be farther back. In a two to three player game, the second space off the path may not be occupied. Okay, now that we've gone over movement, let's talk about the actions. When a traveler lands on a shop, they may buy souvenirs. They will draw the top three souvenir cards and then choose which ones to buy. They may buy one, two, or all three cards. The cost of the cards are in the bottom left corner. Any not purchased will go face down on the bottom of the deck. Souvenirs come in four types, small objects, clothing, art, and food and drinks. Players will collect sets of souvenirs, but each set may only have one of each type of souvenir, though the player may have as many different sets going as they want. The first souvenir in the set will score the player one point, the second will score three points, the third five points, and the final fourth souvenir will score seven points for a total of 16 points for a complete set. Note that in this game, points are always scored immediately, so when adding a new souvenir, the player will immediately go up on the score track. When a traveler stops on a farm space, they will simply take three coins from the bank. There is no limit to how many coins a player may have. When a player lands on a panorama space, they will take the corresponding panorama card, either sea, mountain, or paddy. Panoramas are made up of multiple cards. If the player has not started that panorama, they will take the one value card of that type. Otherwise, they will take the next number card in line. They will immediately score points based on the number taken, one point for a one card, two points for a two card, and so on. The paddy panorama is three cards wide, the mountain is four, and the sea panorama is five cards wide. Note that players may only create one panorama of each type. When a traveler arrives at a hot springs location, they will draw the top card of the hot springs deck and immediately score the points shown on the card, either two or three points. At the temple location, players will make donations. They must donate at least one coin, but may donate up to three. The player will immediately score one point for every coin donated. Coins donated to the temple will go onto your traveler color here, not to the bank. Encounter locations are where you meet interesting people. 
When a traveler stops here, they will take the top card of the encounter deck and carry out its effect. If they meet Shokunin, the traveling merchant, they will immediately take the top card from the souvenir pile, add it to one of their sets, and score points following the normal rules. A Naibito the Guide allows the player to gain the next or first card in the panorama shown at the bottom of their card, scoring points normally. If you have already completed this panorama, you may choose another panorama to add to. The Samurai simply gives the player three points, and Kuge the Noble gives gives the player three coins. And finally, Miko the Shinto Priest gives the player one coin from the bank to donate to the temple. One point is scored normally and the coin is added to their temple space on the board. The last location is the inn. These spaces are special and travelers must stop at an inn when they get to one. The first player to get to an inn will go to the first space here, with the other players taking the spots behind them in the order they arrive. Getting to the inn first is very beneficial. When the first player gets to the inn, they will take meal cards off the top of the deck equal to the number of players plus one. So in a four player game, they would take five cards. They may then choose one to purchase for either one, two, or three coins depending on the meal. If they do choose to purchase a meal, they will add it to their collection of cards and score six points. The meals the first traveler did not purchase will go to the side of the meal deck here until the next traveler arrives at the inn. The next traveler will then get to choose meals from those left over. This continues until the last player gets to the inn and they will choose a meal from what's left, each traveler potentially getting to choose from less and less meals. This is important because throughout the game, players may only choose each meal once and they may not have duplicates, so getting to the inn first is an advantage because you have more options to choose from. Once the last player has arrived at the inn and chosen their meal, play will continue with the furthest player back going first, in this case the player to last arrive at the inn. Play will continue until all players have reached the last inn at Edo and purchased meal cards. Once this is done, final scoring will commence. At the end of the game, players will look and see who donated the most money to the temple. The player who donated the most will gain 10 points, second most will gain 7 points, the third most will gain 4 points, and all other players will gain 2 points. In the case of a tie, all players score the points for that rank. If a player did not donate any coins to the temple, they will not score any points. The last bit of scoring is for the achievement cards we set next to the board during setup. There are seven achievement cards in total and all are worth three points. The three panorama achievements are awarded during the game. The first traveler to complete a panorama will receive the corresponding achievement card and score three points. The other four are awarded at the end of the game. The gourmet card is awarded to the player who spent the most money on meals throughout the game. The bather card is given to the traveler who has the most hot spring cards. The chatterbox is given to the traveler with the most encounter cards and the collector is given to the traveler with the most souvenir cards. If players tie for an achievement, they both score the three points. And at the end of final scoring, the player with the most points will win. So that is how you play the base game of Takeda, but this game has two expansions, the Crossroads expansion and the Matsuri expansion. So let's learn how to play those. The Crossroads expansion gives players more options at each of the locations on the board. You will set up the base game in the normal way, though now you will add the expansion board just above the main board. On the expansion board, shuffle each deck and place them on their corresponding spaces. The new travelers may be added to the pool of existing ones. The gameplay is exactly the same, except now each location has two options instead of one. The original actions at each location are exactly the same as in the base game, though now when going to a panorama space, the player may instead take a cherry tree card. These cards will give the player two points and one coin, though cherry tree cards do not count towards the panorama achievements. When at the hot springs, the player may pay one coin for a bathhouse card, which will gain the player four points. Bathhouse cards are considered to be hot springs and count towards the bather achievement. While at a farm, a traveler may push their luck. They may now spend two coins and roll the fortune die. If an X comes up, they lose their money. If a times one comes up, they get their money back. A times two doubles their money, a times three triples their money, and a times four quadruples their money. When at a temple, the player may pay one coin to the bank and take an amulet card, which are single-use effects. The player will choose an amulet from the deck and play it when they see fit, though they may not play it on the same turn they acquired it. 
Used amulets are returned to the stack on the expansion board. The vitality card allows the player to take another turn right away when they move to being the lead traveler. Note that this cannot be used while at an inn. The fortune card allows the player to roll the fortune die and gain the coins shown. An X is zero coins and then one, two, three, and four coins. The health card allows the player to take both actions at a location. The friendship card allows a player to stop at a location that is already occupied. The new player arriving is considered to be farther back on the path. The hospitality card allows the player to take their meal card for free while at an inn. And finally, the devotion card allows the player to give the money spent on a purchasable item like a souvenir or a meal card straight to the temple. They will score one point for every coin spent. At the shops, travelers may now acquire legendary objects. These cost one, two, or three coins and will score the player points. The Shoro and Imaki cards will gain one point for each souvenir or legendary object in the player's collection and will score one point whenever one is gained thereafter. The Bupatsu and Emma cards may be added to a set of souvenirs, making the maximum set five cards instead of four, the fifth card in the set scoring nine points. And finally, the Murasume and Masamune cards simply score 8 points when obtained. Legendary objects are taken into account when awarding the Collector Achievement. When travelers stop at an encounter location, they may now pay 1 coin to take a Calligraphy card. The Foresight card will score 2 points at the end of the game for every coin a player has left. The Contemplation card will score 3 points per complete panorama and 1 point per Cherry Tree card at the end of the game. Nostalgia scores 1 point per souvenir and 2 points per legendary object at the end of the game. The Patience card scores when arriving at the last inn. If you arrive last, you will score 6 points, second to last is 4 points, and all other players Places are two points. Perfection scores two points per achievement and one point per calligraphy card, including itself, at the end of the game. And lastly, the fasting card awards the player three points for every uneaten meal, i.e. every time the player did not buy a meal at an inn. Calligraphy cards are considered when awarding the Chatterbox achievement. Every other part of the base game is the same, and that's how you play the Crossroads expansion. But now let's move on to the Matsuri expansion. Note that you need both the base game and the Crossroads expansion to play the Matsuri expansion. The game sets up in the same way, except now you will shuffle the Matsuri cards and place them next to the board. The extra tokens will be placed next to the bank of coins, and the new travelers will get shuffled into the existing pool. This expansion only takes place at the inns and activate after the inn actions are done. Everything else about the game is exactly the same. Now, before turns start again after an inn, the player who arrived at the inn first will draw two Matsuri cards and will choose one, placing the other one at the bottom of the deck. The chosen Matsuri card will be placed face up on the deck and its effect will take place. That's the whole expansion, but let's go into what each of these cards do. There are two types of Matsuri cards, ones that activate immediately and ones that are persistent effects until the next inn is reached. Let's start with the cards that activate immediately. Obon allows the player to immediately donate to the temple in the order they arrived at the inn, scoring points per usual. Tori no Ichi gives each player who doesn't have an amulet one off the top of the deck. Hina Matsuri gives each player with a feminine traveler a doll token which can be added to a souvenir set as a small object souvenir. The tango card works the same way but for players with a masculine traveler and they will receive a carp. Note that these are not considered souvenir cards for achievements or legendary objects. When the Hanabi card is chosen, two more Matsuri cards will be drawn and put into play. Their effects are applied normally. Ofune Matsuri allows all players to receive the next card in the C panorama unless they already have it finished. If this causes multiple players to finish the panorama, the C panorama achievement is awarded to all who finished it. Oshogatsu allows the players to roll the fortune die and gain the coins rolled. Setsubun works the same way except players will gain points instead of coins. When Tanabata is chosen, the four end game achievements are immediately scored, although players only get two points instead of the normal three. The achievements are still scored normally at the end of the game. If Otsukimi is chosen, the player who chose it will choose a calligraphy card from the stack and place it next to the achievements, and at the end of the game, all players will score this calligraphy card. And the final immediate Matsuri card is Shishimai, and if this is chosen, the temple donations will score immediately, except first place will only gain 4 points, and 2 for second, and 1 for third. The Choyo card is special because it takes place at the next inn, and if this one is chosen, all meal cards at the next inn cost 1 coin less. And the first player at the inn draws 2 more cards than usual. Now let's go over the cards that have persistent effects until players arrive at the next inn. 
Yamanoko allows the players to take an additional mountain panorama when at a mountain space, scoring points normally. Otaue Matsuri allows the player to make a one-coin donation to the temple while at paddy locations, scoring one point normally. Hadaka Matsuri allows players to draw an encounter card while at hot springs locations. Ohanami gives the players one coin while at panorama spaces. Gyon Matsuri allows players to choose the encounter they want while at encounter spaces instead of drawing one randomly. After the encounter is chosen, reshuffle the deck. Kamiyari Sai closes down temple spaces. Toka Ibisu and Muramatsuri work the same way but for shops and farms respectively. If it's a 2-3 player game, they are closed completely. If it is a 4-5 player game, only the second space is closed. You may place a closed space token on the locations to signify this. And that is all of the Matsuri cards and how they work. Okay, that is how you play the base game and the two expansions. And now is the time to go over all the travelers in the game. I told you we'd get back to it. If you decide to play with the travelers, at the start of the game, you will give each player two at random and they will choose which one to play with. Though if you're playing with the Matsuri expansion, there are a lot of travelers. So you may want to give everyone three to choose from instead of two. Okay, we're going to go through them all, starting with the ones in the base game and then the Crossroads expansion and then the Matsuri expansion. Let's do it. Note before we start that whenever I say the intermediate ends, I mean all but the first and last ends on the board. Okay, let's start the base game off with Hiroshige the artist who will take one panorama card of their choosing while at the intermediate ends. When Chubei the messenger arrives at the intermediate ends, they will draw an encounter card and apply its effect. Each meal card purchased by Kinko the Ronin will cost one coin less, which means one coin meals are free. When drawing encounter cards, Yoshiyasu the Functionary will draw two encounters and keep the one he wishes, the other card going to the bottom of the stack. When Satsuki the Orphan arrives at an inn, she receives the first meal card from the meal deck for free. After seeing this card, the player may instead purchase a meal card per normal like the other players. Mitsukuni the Old Man earns one additional point for each Hot Springs card and for each achievement card. While at the shop, if Sasayako the Geisha purchased at least two souvenir cards, the cheapest one is free. Note that she must have the funds to purchase both for this effect to trigger. When Hiritada the priest stops at a temple, he may take one coin from the bank and donate it to the temple scoring one point. This is in addition to the normal coins he may donate. Umegai the street performer may earn one point and one coin during each encounter before the effects of the card are implied. And finally, while at the shop, Zen M on the Merchant may purchase one souvenir for one coin instead of the marked price. Now on to the travelers from the Crossroads expansion. When arriving at the intermediate inns, Jorocho the Yakuza may bet one coin and roll the fortune die. He may lose his coin, gain it back, or double, triple, or quadruple his coin. When arriving at the intermediate inns, Daigoro the Kid immediately draws a souvenir card. Nampo the Gourmet scores an additional point based on which meal he eats at the inn. One point for a one coin meal, two points for two coins, or three points for a three coin meal. Goto Zaemon, the souvenir seller, gains one coin when they stop at a panorama space. Miyataka the Superstitious Woman may carry out both actions while at a temple space. And finally, Kita the Old Woman may carry out both actions while at an encounter space. And now let's move on to the Matsuri expansion. At the beginning of the game, all players must give Kushidana the World Traveler one coin and she may look at her opponent's calligraphy and amulet cards at any time. After an inn, Matsumi the Brute may always leave first regardless of the turn order. Whenever any traveler stops at an encounter space, Takeru the Counselor takes a coin. When at a shop, instead of the normal actions, Rakuren the Collector may choose to randomly draw four souvenir cards and one legendary object, and he may buy as many as he likes. Kamui the Vagabond scores three points whenever he doesn't buy a meal in an inn. While at a temple space, Mari the Poet scores two points for every coin she donates, or she may take an amulet for free. At the intermediate inns, Yashima receives a random amulet card for free. While at the intermediate inns, Katsuna the Cook may purchase an additional meal card scoring it normally. While at the intermediate inns, Chihaya the Bather receives a random hot springs card. While at a farm, Iyasaka the manual worker will receive an additional coin. Or if rolling the fortune die, he may re-roll the die once, though he must take the second roll if this is done. At the end of the game, Marihito the rider may double one of the calligraphy cards in his collection. At the end of the game, Suseri the erudite scores one point for each different type of card in her collection. Meal cards only cost Ayumu the Walker one coin while it ends, and while at shops, small object souvenirs are free. 
While at the intermediate inns, Musubi the Rogue may take one coin from the traveler who arrived before and after him. If the player has no coins, or if they only have one neighbor, Musubi may take it from the bank instead. Every time any traveler stops at a temple, Misaki the Disciple gains a coin from the bank. And finally, while at a shop, Titia the Dutch Tourist buys art souvenirs for one coin less. And that is all of the travelers in Takedo. Takedo is a game built around taking a relaxing walk. The game and its expansions are relatively simple in terms of rules, but there's a ton of strategy. The movement alone takes some serious consideration. And then with the addition of the expansions, the game opens up even more. And you have a ton of travelers to choose from, each one making your game a little bit different and unique. And if Takedo and its expansions seem like something you might enjoy, make sure to check out their pages on BoardGameGeek.com. Until next time, I've been Nick Murphy. We're here with Board Game Geek, and that is how to play Takedo and its expansions. Have a great day.